Hi guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the end times in Doomsday Eco Lodge in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. We have stumbled into Thursday, January 29th, 2015, and I'm just uh, trying to fill up my day on this beautiful day and pawing through the mainstream media and this story obviously appealed to me since I, I have some personal history talking about Peruvian Amazon Indians being, taking on oil companies so uh, this is from Reuters news a uh, few versions of this story, but I wanted to uh, do this Reuters news because it brings out an, the probably the most important element of the story about all of these uh, Amazon Indians. I won't say all of them. I will say the vast majority of these Amazon Indians in fights with these oil companies down there invading their ancestral homelands this is the inconvenient truth about this story that I, I devoted an entire chapter of my book that I wrote in 2009 about this very subject. Uh, the inconvenient truth that the, these, uh, I don't know, the, these little uh, dreaming, delusional uh, I guess you would call them some cousin of environmentalists who have some ridiculous notion that these Amazon Indians are trying to kick the oil companies out of their ancestral homelands. Now, some of them are, okay, particularly there in... in uh, in Ecuador want nothing to do with them and I'm just gonna read you this story and see if you can find the most germane little uh, kernel of inconvenient truth okay native protesters take over oil wells in Peru's biggest oil block all right Native protesters occupied 16 wells in Peru's biggest oil block, halting crude output as they demanded better compensation for use of their native lands from Argentine firm Plus Petrol, an indigenous leader said on Tuesday. So uh, make sure you're understanding this. The Indians are not wanting to kick the oil companies out. They want the plata, the dinero. They, they want these greedy sons of bitches to, they want their payola. And we'll talk about this more. And if, if you remember this big uh, massacre back in uh, 2009 in Bagua, Peru, uh, this was the same thing. Uh, you know, where all of these Indians and cops and stuff were in, in this bloodbath over this, uh, it, kind of in the same neighborhood as this, <clears throat> what was quietly not mentioned or glossed over by all of these uh, Indian rights, native rights activists was the fact that <coughs> these leaders were not trying to kick the oil companies out. They wanted more money from the oil companies so they could buy shit like uh, gasoline-powered chainsaws, gasoline-powered outboard motors, and don't forget uh, the satellite dishes for their huts out in the jungle. This is what uh, the vast majority of 
the Indians being invaded by these oil companies want. And uh, so see if I can get any nasty letters. It's probably a good thing so few people listen to Humpty Dumpty Tribe. <clears throat> and, and guys, I'm not happy to bring you this news. Uh, you, you know, it's this news, it is this inconvenient truth, and this isn't limited to Peruvian Indians, it's all over this planet, uh, this inconvenient truth that, uh, and, and, and it is just one more reason that I am completely, totally hopeless about the situation on this planet. Anyway, okay, so the wells, <coughs> the 16 wells stopped producing midday on Monday when some 380 members of the Oshwar community of Papa Hermosa took control of facilities and obstructed roads in oil block 1AB, said Carlos Sandi, president of local indigenous group Feco Naco. So the uh, oil block produced last year about 15,000 barrels of oil per day, nearly a quarter of Peru's relatively small output, the output that's getting bigger every day. Uh, it is unclear how much oil is produced by the 16 wells that were, su that were shut down. Uh, okay, so what were the protesters demanding? Okay, I'm a, before I get into this, let's go down to the bottom paragraph of this story, and I will put this uh, that I will put this story uh, on the link to this story, so you can read this yourself. Okay, let's see. The oil block has been the target of several indigenous protests in recent years. Last year, Ashwar communities prote protesting environmental problems occupied facilities that cut oil production uh, by 70% for about a week. The government declared environmental emergencies in several parts of the oil block in recent years because of high levels of pollution linked to past spills and leaks. <clears throat> okay, so with that, you, you might think that what these indigenous protesters are demanding is, is that the goddamn oil companies get the hell out of their homelands. If that is the conclusion you draw, you would be drawing an incorrect conclusion. <clears throat> Sandy said protesters are demanding better compensation for the use of their lands and installation of an industrial sawmill promised by the company. They want their goddamn industrial sawmill promised by the oil company to sweeten the pot and the oil company did not come up with their industrial sawmill I guarantee you their uh, fossil fuel powered industrial sawmill for their little Indian village, Pampa Hermosa. Beautiful plain, I think that's called, uh, yes. 
this is what the Amazon Indians are demanding and if the oil company will simply give these Indians the, the goddamn industrial sawmill they promised them then they'll be happy uh, you know I it was at the very end of my book uh, from down there in Peru the the day that it finally dawned on me uh, in this little Indian village where I was hanging out in the Peruvian Amazon where Hunt Oil Company, these, these goddamn planet eaters from good old Texas down there, uh, you know, attacking this Indian reservation down there in Peru and uh, the, the main guy, this chief of this village, and this ayahuascaro shaman, everything, uh, you know, leading the charge, trying to kick Hunt Oil out of his village and out of the jungle. He failed miserably, by the way, uh, needless to say. Uh, his efforts to kick Hunt Oil out of the Peruvian Amazon uh, failed miserably. Uh, but that being said, what this guy did for a living, the, the leader of the charge to get rid of the oil companies, is what he did every day was he put his 36 inch chainsaw into his dugout canoe and sallied forth into the rainforest to cut down the rainforest. Uh, I don't even want to know where the lumber that he was going uh, or how much he got paid for it. Uh, you, you know guys, there, there's no way out. There is no way out. And, uh... Anywho, you draw your own conclusions. If you want to join this list of delusional uh, little uh, Indian huggers uh, suffering some delusion that the vast majority of these indigenous tribes from Peru to the Congo to New Guinea uh, want the planet eaters out of their planet. Uh, go ahead and suffer that delusion. No, they want the dinero and they want the industrial sawmills and the shotguns and the chainsaws, and the outboard motors, and the roads, and the flat screen TVs. They want what anybody else wants, and what any other Kmart shopper wants. <clears throat> oh well, I understand I'm talking to myself. So I will wrap up this rant, and I need to figure out where to do my mushroom trip, which should be coming up in the full moon in a few days. So I'm going to start picking that out for this rantlet. Bye, guys.